Ray Spitfire, here's my tip by Diddly, and today we're gonna be doing a formal review on Ze Clown, or this abomination of a man. Good lord, man, that is. That's rough. Man's had a lot of McDoubles. Good lord. Okay, well, we're gonna talk about Clown, his strengths, his weaknesses, and everything in between. But before we get started, please hit the like button, subscribe, join the typical YouTuber stuff, and that note, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video, everybody. Okay, so the first perk we'll be talking about is, um, hold on, I'm gonna have to consult Google really quick. Carophobia. Carophobia? That's, god, English is a weird language. Also, apparently it's the fear of clowns, so there's your fun fact for the day. Honestly, that's probably about the most interesting thing about this perk, because its actual, you know, value as a perk is awful. Here's what it does. It makes it so survivors heal 50% slower in your terror radius. Wow, that's that's really something. That's an amazing perk. Wow, that is beautiful development right there. That's up there as one of the top perks, like right up there with like territorial imperative and undone. That is just, whew, that is a zinger of a perk right there. So honestly, this perk is so lame, I can't even think of a joke for it. It's generally just that bad because fun fact, usually when you're within, you know, a killer's terror radius as a survivor, you usually stop healing and in the few scenarios where you don't stop healing, it's probably because you're almost done anyway. So this perk is more than likely not going to get much value at all. So that's really all I have to say about it. This perk is like a 2 out of 10. This is really, really bad. I think out of like the 20 games I played as token footage for this video, I genuinely don't think this perk got value once. once, once. So, you know, bad perk, 2 out of 10. Next perk, please. The second perk we have is Bamboozle, which is honestly the most perfect name for a perk I have ever seen. Its whole purpose, essentially, as a perk is just to blue ball as the survivors out of vaults. It's honestly kind of funny. Very annoying, but also funny. Like, this perk is really good in certain scenarios. Sometimes it doesn't do a whole lot, but when it does hit, whew, it hits. Like, say, for example, you're looping, like, Killer Shack. Oh, yeah, Bamboozle will absolutely put in some work. Like, it is really good. Situational, mind you, but still, pretty darn good. So overall, I think this gets a solid 6 out of 10. Is it perfect? No, because once, you know, survivors realize you have this perk, they can play around it pretty easily. But when it hits, it's it's nice. It's real nice. So moving on. All right, the last perk we have to talk about is Pop Goes the Weasel. And to be honest, there really isn't a whole lot to talk about here because this perk is just really good for, you know, the two people who don't know what this perk does. Essentially, it reduces the generator's progression by 30%. So, in theory, you can have a generator that's at like 90% and it goes down to 60%. Or, you know, usually doesn't get that much value, but either way, still a very good perk. Arguably the best generator regression perk in the game, apart from maybe pain res, but yeah, you really can't go wrong with this perk. It literally fits anywhere. It's like the perfect perk. It literally is guaranteed to get value every single game. I have nothing else to really add here. It's busted. Honestly, it could really use a nerf, but I digress. All right, let's talk about the power. Now, Clown's power is one of the most hated powers in the Dead by Daylight community by a... Actually, I wouldn't say it's the most hated, but it's definitely up there. It's a very annoying power, and honestly, I can understand it. So, what I'm about to say might might trigger a few people clown's power is actually kind of hard to use effectively now before you impale me for survivor heresy against the survivor nation hear me out maybe it's just the fact that i'm on a controller or that i have the mechanical skill of you know a donut but i had a real hard time actually getting a lot of value out of the perk now hitting the tonic that's easy but following up on the tonic, that's a lot harder because if the survivor's even remotely competent, all they really have to do is just play around vaults or play around a pallet. Yeah, sure, they're a little slower, and yes, their vision is distorted. At the end of the day, though, there's still a lot of counterplay around it. Like, it's not like Pinhead's power or Death Slinger's power, where if you get hit with it while you're looping a killer, you're kind of done for. With Clown, you can absolutely work around it, and quite frankly, even ignoring that, there are still a lot of flaws with both tonics. So 
let's not waste any time and let's just dive right into it. Okay, so first you have your speed tonic. Now, the biggest thing with speed tonic that makes it kind of annoying to use is the fact that it has a deployment time. What do I mean by that? Well, you throw the bottle and it takes three seconds for the actual like haste effect to apply. So say you're chasing a survivor, you can't just throw the bottle at your feet because then you won't get the haste. So you have to throw the bottle ahead of you and then you have to walk into that bottle as like, you know, cloud after the fact. Problem with that is when a survivor sees you throw a speed tonic, they're gonna be like, oh, let me just read like, you know, direct course and just walk away from the speed tonic. And then you won't get it. Or if you throw it too close to the survivor, they can also benefit from your speed tonic. So that's not great. <laughs> is the, is, I mean, it's great for gameplay, don't get me wrong. Like it's fun when both people have a speed boost, but as far as like the actual effectiveness of that power, the fact that survivors can benefit from the haste as well as the killer is, kind of nullifies a lot of the usefulness if I am being totally honest here. However, what it lacks in anti-loop, it makes up for in just general utility. So for example, say you're kicking a generator, just throw a haste bottle down and then, you know, while you're kicking the generator, you get your haste after the fact and you can just go run off where you need to go. Or you're picking up a survivor, throw a haste bottle before you pick it up because you'll inevitably get value and you'll be able to bring the survivor to a hook faster. So honestly, haste is more of a utility than it is an actual like anti-loop power. So overall, I think the haste bottle is kind of meh. Like I think it's like a six out of 10. Like it's just not, it's not bad, but the fact of the matter is it's just not great. Like it's not really like an aggressive power. Like it's not an offensive power at all. It's just kind of there to help you move a little faster. So overall, I think it's okay, but not great. Okay, let's talk about the most annoying part of Clown's Kit by far, the slow tonic. So. I'm gonna state the obvious here. Clown's Tonic in an anti-loop setting is insane. It's really strong, borderline overpowered. It's annoying for the survivor. It's not really fair for the survivor. And there's really not a whole lot of brain power on behalf of the killer to effectively pull it off. However, once you use the slow tonic outside of a loop, that's when things get a lot more interesting. I'm gonna say something that I think a lot of you survivor mains out there are gonna like lose your mind when you hear it, okay? The tonic actually takes skill to use outside of a loop. Inside a loop, yeah, it's pretty brainless. You just chuck a bottle and then you hit the survivor. Very brainless, not a whole lot of thought there. However, if you are chasing a survivor, yeah. There's a fair bit of like, you know, brain power and mechanical, well, maybe not mechanical skill, but there's definitely brain power that goes into it. Because when I first started playing Clown, I kind of just yeeted my bottles at anything that moved and like, say I'm in a chase, I just yeet a bottle at them. Ooh, that's simple. Problem is, it doesn't usually work out like, like that because survivors have functioning brains and they can just walk around it. So you have to, you know, lead your shots, but that's kind of hard to do. And, you know, if you admit, if you overshoot it, that's not gonna do anything. If you undershoot it, that's not gonna do anything. And even if you do hit them, you really gotta know how to close the distance fast enough before that survivor gets to a vault. Because if they do get to a vault, well, guess what? Your tonic is useless. Or say, they go into a pallet. Doesn't matter how slow they are, you're still gonna get a pallet drop in your face and they're still gonna be able to run away just the same. It's also not gonna stop you from getting flashlight stunned either. I mean, so there's a lot of scenarios where slow tonic really isn't that busted. It's really, really strong in that anti-loop scenario, but outside of that anti-loop scenario, it's not that good, honestly. So I'm a little bit conflicted on where to put it because on one hand, for looping or anti-looping, it's really, really strong. But in chase, it's really not that great. So do I just split the difference and say, oh, it's a five out of 10? Well, that's pretty disingenuous, especially since I put speed tonic at six out of 10, so. Eh, I'd say, honestly, I think, you know what? I think six out of 10 is fitting because the speed tonic actually has a lot of value too. But I think the slow tonic is really good at one thing, but kind of sucks at everything else. It's a one trick pony. It really isn't that effective. And if you're good as a survivor, even in that anti-loop scenario, it is feasible to play around it. So honestly, unless you're a really cracked clown player, the slow tonic is actually kind of hard to use in a lot of situations. Like I said, anti-loop, very brainless, but any other time, I gotta admit, I respect clown players like 2% more now. Unless, you know, I'm like running a loop, then they stun me and I really don't care. Then I hate them just as much. But apart from that, you know, it's respectable. So 
overall, that is my thoughts on the clown. If you guys did up enjoying the video, please hit the like button, subscribe. Do do not say strong, stay clear. See y'all in the next one.